Today we are going to be doing a deck deck for Daryl, Hunter of Walkers. Daryl is two red green for a 4 4 legendary creature, human archer. At the beginning of your upkeep, target opponent creates three walker tokens. And tap. Daryl deals two damage to target creature. And whenever a zombie an opponent controls dies, draw a card. To clarify, a walker token is a 2 2 zombie. So. Basically, the idea of the deck is to give opponents zombies, which Daryl does by himself, and there's not really any effective ways of doing that other than Daryl. So basically, first, we give opponents zombies. Then, one way or another, we can use Daryl, we can use other things, we are going to kill those zombies. So, so that we can get the trigger from Daryl to draw a card. So, that's the main idea of the deck. Um... Let's get into how we are going to assist uh, the completion of that deck. One category is untapped. So Daryl's ability taps to deal two damage to target creature, and that will be able to kill a walker. But what if you want to either A, kill more than one walker per turn, which you're going to want to do because you're making three walkers per turn. If you want to do that, you're going to have to untap it or use something else. So, using untap effects, we can just ping something and then ping it again. So, that's really nice. Um, it's good to have that ability. Another thing uh, that is notable uh, is if we want to kill something that isn't a zombie. Say we've killed all the zombies on the board, right? And there's a commander that's a 2-2. We can just kill that. Or, if we have two additional untaps, we can kill something that's a 4-4 or less, right? We can kill things other than zombies if we are killing our zombies, which is quite easy to do in this deck. There's a lot of different ways to kill the zombies, and a couple of those ways will just instantly wipe all of the zombies off of the field. So, Daryl is not really necessarily going to be doing that job. So... There's a couple different ways um, of untapping, but typically it boils down to once each time it is your turn, um, you can untap Daryl. Which, you know, when you have two of those, it really adds up. And when you just have one, it gives you a little bit of a, bo of a bonus. And another way it could, you know, do it is if it says... At the beginning of each untap step, so that would be on your untap step. Well, it wouldn't actually go on your untap step. Uh, in the beginning of each opponent's untap step, you are going to untap Daryl or untap something. So this is really good because you're going to get to use Daryl on every other player's turn, which just gets you a lot of extra activations. So that's, that's the main idea of untap. Um, but there's a couple other ways we can kill zombies. So, first one is just this category, destroy all zombies. So, every card in this category will kill all zombies with its ability. There's a couple different ways we can do this. So, the first one is because the zombies are tokens, they have a converted mana cost of zero. So, if we use something that will kill all creatures with a specific converted mana cost, or with a converted mana cost less than or equal to uh, a specific number, we can kill all the zombies, and that only has to be zero. So because of that, we can end up killing nothing else except for tokens, which we don't care about having tokens in this deck, and we can spend little to no mana um, using that ability, which is great. So another um, category, you know, I'll give an example for that. Uh, we would have engineered explosives would be uh, X for an artifact with Sunburst. This enters the battlefield with a charge counter on it for each color of mana you spent to cast it. So if you spend zero mana to cast it, it will enter with no charge counters. And it has two, Sacrifice Engineered Explosives. Destroy each non-land permanent with converted mana cost equal to the number of charge counters on Engineered Explosives. So for two mana, you can kill every single walker token if you're behind or if you just haven't been killing them, which will allow you to use Daryl to kill other things. And you can also kill 
other zero CMC things like tokens, incidentally. All right, another category of things is basically board wipes, right? So something that will deal X damage to each creature without flying in each player. So if we choose two damage, it's going to kill every walker, but it will also kill everything with power, with toughness two or less. So, you know, we have to walk a careful line, but in this deck, there aren't too many things we can lose. The main category we, we are gonna be losing things in will be the untap category, but there's not too much stuff there. So we're really not gonna lose very much. Plus we're, it's flexible, so if we do wanna wrath the entire board, we can use it like that. Or if we want to not use it at all or use it for only one damage for some weird reason, I'm not sure why you'd do that, you could also do that. So it's flexible and you can just not cast it if it's really gonna impact you super negatively. Uh, and other than that, there's basically one more category, and it's just a specific card. Aether Flash is two red red for an enchantment. Whenever a creature comes into play, Aether Flash deals two damage to it. So target opponent will create three two twos, and then those two twos will all take two damage and instantly die. This, this is amazing in this deck because it turns Daryl into something that will give people walkers and then you have to kill them and then you have to draw into, at the beginning of your upkeep, draw three cards, which is just so, so much better, right? It just skips so many steps. And the good thing about his ability is it's not that you're going to lose too much value from not having to kill those walkers anymore because there are other things you can kill and other ways you can use that ability. So that's amazing. Another category, because we're drawing so much, I added a lot of ramp. Um, so the ramp is one or two CMC because we can cast it on turn one or two and then using that mana, that um, ramp, we can then cast Daryl on turn three. It's just a way to speed everything up when you are making a commander deck and you want to figure out what CMC ramp you have, look at the CMC of your commander because if you cast ramp on turn three and then cast your commander on turn four, you're not getting nearly as much benefit as if you had two CMC ramp. I am not running Cultivate or Kadama's Reach in basically any decks nowadays because I don't have very many five CMC commanders. Four CMC commanders are my typical amount and I just think it's a lot better to do uh, that two and then turn three cast the commander. It works a lot better in my opinion. And also because we're drawing a lot, it will give us more mana to cast the things we can draw. We are drawing. Uh, another thing, another category is, well, how are we gonna take advantage of this, right? So you've said, all right, we can kill all these zombies, right? There's nine cards in the category of destroying all zombies, and there's 15 cards in the category of untapping, and there's 14 cards in ramp. So there's a good amount of ramp, that's just nice. Um, destroying all zombies, we can fairly consistently do. Um, and then we're gonna have lots of things from untap, lots of triggers of Daryl, lots of abilities, lots of opportunities to use um, his pinging. What, what is the advantage of that, right? So there's several things. First of all, you're very, very likely gonna have an opponent. They can, their deck does not work without their commander and their commander is two power or less. So you can just basically shut down their entire deck with it. Another thing is you can just kill a lot of incidental creatures, ramp, a lot of stuff like that. Um, just little small creatures that benefit you in some way, benefit your opponents in some way, really. You can just kill them. And it's really nice to be able to do that. And if you have enough um, activations of Daryl, you can kill things with power four or less, right? You, maybe you can even kill things with power six or less. So you can just use it over and over and over again if you wanna kill something really big that's important. But that does get difficult to do. But how are we gonna enhance this? So first of all, there are abilities we can put on Daryl, right? Ways we can benefit off of Daryl that aren't, you know, what we have already put forward. 
So one example of that would be Gorgon's Head. Gorgon's Head is one for an artifact equipment. Equipped creature has Death Touch, and it has Equip 2. So if we tap Daryl, and we just deal the damage to any creature, it will die, which is just so much better, right? We can kill a 10-10 just by tapping it. It becomes so easy to kill whatever you want. Considering you can untap it and use it over and over and over again, that is amazing. And there's a lot of cards in here that will give you that ability. It's not going to be uncommon for you to get that ability. Another, you know, ability you could get would be lifelink. So lifelink is whenever it deals damage, you're going to gain that much life. So every time you deal that two damage with um, Daryl, you're going to get two life, which doesn't seem huge, but over time you'll get a lot of life. And beyond that, uh, we also have some pingers, which are just creatures that will tap to deal one damage. So this is going to help you in a couple of ways. So first of all, a lot of the untap effects will work on everything, so you can use these multiple times. Second of all, um, if you have extra, say you have two things that give um, creatures death touch, you can give it to a pinger and to Daryl, so that way you'll get a lot more, you know, you'll actually be able to use that card. Third of all, it gives us a little bit more damage to add on top of Daryl. Say we can activate Daryl twice, and then we can activate a pinger once, that gives us five damage to work with, which, make, which makes us able to kill a lot of large creatures. And, I mean, that's the main benefit, um, but it just is really helpful to have them in this deck. I only did three because I don't want to overdo it, but you could add more if you wanted to make this a fully pinger deck. First of all, I just threw in removal. This is very dependent on which cards you want to include. So change this up to your liking, to your budget, whatever. Um, but I had Nature's Claim, Beast Within, Chaos Warp, Reclamation Sage. You can change that, you can keep it, whatever. And then we just had a couple other things that helped me. So first of all, I have Tutors, I have Draw. Well, I have Gamble and I have Harmonize, which are Tutors and Draw. And I also have a board wipe in Blasphemous Act. And as I covered, I have more board wipes within my Destroy All Zombies category. So I have good amount of I have a good amount of options for uh, board wipes, and I don't have too many options for draw, but that's because um, my commander Daryl basically does that for us, and it's not going to be too difficult to keep him out. But you know it depends. We also have a lot of things that will protect protect Daryl in the Daryl abilities category, so it's good to keep him safe. Okay, so another thing that we have in the other category is Rampaging Ferocidon. Rampaging Ferocidon is two and a red for three three with menace. Players can't gain life. And whenever another creature enters the battlefield, Rampaging Ferocidon deals one damage to that creature's controller. So if we are giving an opponent three zombies, they will then be taking three damage, which over time will add up. Now, the not gaining life might end up being detrimental to us due to giving lifelink to Daryl being a fairly common occurrence. Um, it, it seems like it should be fine. I mean, it might work, it might not, um, but you can always just not cast it if you are gaining a lot of life off of Daryl. I think that it's fine to have some non-bows because Rampaging Ferocidon will consistently give us a benefit of dealing the damage and it'll be quite inconsistent um, that it will affect us negatively uh, by not gaining life. All right, Brash Taunter and Stuffy Doll do basically the same thing. Brash Taunter is four and a red for a one one with indestructible. Whenever Brash Taunter is deal dealt damage, it deals that much damage to target opponent. And two red tapped tap Brash Taunter fights another target creature. So. Basically, this is just going to allow us to either use his ability to fight creatures, get extra damage, uh, deal damage to opponents, or we can use Daryl to um, deal two damage to Brash Taunter, and it'll deal damage to opponents, or we can use our X spells that will kill um, that will kill zombies. We can make those bigger, and then we can deal a lot of damage to target opponent. So. That's, there's a lot of different flexible ways that this can work. 
and Stuffy Doll is about the same. Uh, it's five mana, and when it enters the battlefield, choose a player, and it's indestructible, and when it's dealt damage, it deals that much damage to the chosen player. And instead of fighting, it deals one damage to itself. So that's pretty nice to have. Um, just being able to deal damage to opponents with it does add up over time. Great Bow Doyen is four and a green for two four. Other archer creatures you control get plus one plus one, and whenever an archer you control deals damage to a creature, that archer deals that much damage to an, to that creature's controller. So, believe it or not, Daryl is an archer. So, when it deals two damage to target creature, it will deal two damage to target creature and the controller of that creature. That just adds up over time and will really help get out that damage you need to win the game. So, speaking of win the game, this is a very grindy deck, and the number of ways you can win are somewhat limited, right? So there's a lot of different grindy ways we can do it. Things that allow us to tap to deal two damage to opponents, or Rampaging Frostdawn, Brash Taunter, Stuffy Doll, all that stuff will deal damage to opponents and that will work. Um, we can also use the X spells I was talking about that will deal damage to each creature, uh, where X is the amount you pay. Um, you can use those because a couple of those will deal that much damage to each creature and each player. With this type of deck, you just want to be controlling the board and just slowly chipping away at people's life. So there's not too many ways to win instantly. I mean, that's the deck, right? You want to choose carefully who you're going to give the walker tokens because you want to make sure that they can't take advantage of it, but most people can't. Other than that, uh, that's it for the deck. I just want to cover a couple other things related to my YouTube channel. So, first of all, la a couple couple days ago, uh, I released a video on the Commander Legends leaks, and I missed a huge amount of content there. Basically, I assumed that the pictures with a lot of cards in them were all reprints because I recognized that a few of them were reprints. I was very wrong, and they weren't, right? So there was a lot of cards that I missed that were new in the set, and I just didn't mention. I wanted to be the first one, and for some reason I just chose to not do really any research and figure out if those cards are new, are all new, or not. So it was mixed. Some of it was new, some of it was old. But I will leave a link in the description to a Google document that will show all the new and all the old cards that were in those images. Uh, I'm really disappointed that I missed it, but I think that my mentality while I was making that video was correct. I just should have done a little bit more research. All right, next thing. Uh, this video is coming out late. I don't know if anyone will even notice, but the reason for that is... A lot of reasons. I mean, I don't want to make excuses, but first of all, this weekend, right? I was not at home, I, which is usually when I make my videos. I usually make it on the weekends. I was not at home. I was out camping. After school, I would work on this deck, right? Then the Commander Legends uh, stuff, the leak came out. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to cover this because I know if I get this out immediately, right? I just instantly get this out. I know it will get traction. I know people will click on it because I'll be the only option. So I just put that out. I spent that day doing that. Um, and then I, you know, started doing a deck for one of the commanders in Commander Legends because I was like, that is going to perform a lot better than this deck would. So I started doing that. And then I realized once I had been done with the deck, right, I sat down, started recording. I got to the point where I was explaining the rules um, of how something interacted when I realized I wasn't sure about my rules. So I started doing a lot of research on my rules and I found out I was wrong. So keep in mind, this was Thursday, right? I had like no time left. You know, this was my last possible opportunity to do it. And the, and I was wrong, right? So I was like, okay, I'm going to go back. I'm going to do this Daryl deck. But I knew I couldn't get it out in time. And lots of stuff was happening. So I then, you know, got to today, uh, Friday. Friday is today. So I'm working on it now. 
and I'm recording it now, so hopefully I can get it out soon, but it is late because there was just a lot of, a lot of things that went wrong. All right, well, please like, subscribe, you know, the, the stuff I want you to do, uh, share it with someone. Thank you for listening, and I will see you next time.